you guys, I have amazed myself again. So this all started when I was around town and was drawn in to the Ollie's nearby. And I came upon <laughs> this Red Heart Derby Stripes yarn. I already had five skeins of this at home, but I saw it in the store and was re-inspired to try to make this yarn color pool. Now, it's not ideal for color pooling because the color changes are so long, take so long for the color change to go through. But you guys, you guys, when I obsess about things, I really obsess. And I figured it out. I was so excited for myself. I mean, toot my own horn, toot toot, you know, so excited for myself. I got it to pull. Look at that. Now, it doesn't have, I mean, the, the squares it makes are huge. I mean, because the color changes are so long. And so it doesn't have many of the solid areas. But dang, you guys, look at it. I was like, what? Up close, it just looks like stripes. But when you lay it out, I was like, whoa, look at that. Now, <laughs> let me tell you a quick story. You see right there? where it's a little yellowy. I mean, look close. Can you see it right here on this row right here? That's because the yarn had like a mistake or it had been like tied. And so that section didn't have enough of that color. And so I had to find a yarn in my stash that was similar enough that it would work in that section. So I had to join it on and you know, when you're just snuggled up with it and all that, and you know, nobody's, nobody's gonna see it but me. But since I saw it, let me point that out. <laughs> I originally did a white color because in this colorway, this color seems whiter than, you know, cause there's like a, a tan color, it seems pretty white. But when I did the white, like actual white in that section, it was like glaring like, I am white. I don't belong in this section. And I was like, okay. And I didn't notice it until like four rows later because it was kind of dark when I was working on it. And uh, so the next day I had gotten like four rows up and I was like, oh, that doesn't look good. I got to frog on that. So I had to frog back four rows and, and redo in this more like yellow toned color. But I am going to tell you guys what I did wrong because I was excited to figure out how to get this done. Now, this colorway has five colors. It has the, the white color, a tan, pink, green, and blue. And when I'm doing color pulling, usually I go all the way through the color change. Um, but in this case, it was so long that the chain, the beginning chain, just to get through one colorway was way too long. Like it was obscenely long. It was not going to be a functional blanket. Um, so that's why, you know, in videos in the past of talking about this yarn, I doubled it up trying to make it more chunky so that it wouldn't be as long um, of a color change. And, you know, and it worked. I got it to pool, but I would have needed so much of the yarn that it never would have made a blanket. So in obsessing <laughs> and analyzing this yarn, I realized that I don't have to go all the way through the colorway. I can go halfway through. So I did the first two colors all the way through. And then the third color, I only did half of it. And then I turned around so that it folded over on itself, the other half of that third color, then the fourth and fifth color. So then when I went to do the third row, it was back on color one and two. So that would have the sandwich effect that we're looking for in color pulling. So it had one and two here and then the middle row and then one and two again. So then it started the repeat and I was like, oh, yes, I figured it out. So I was so proud of myself for um, being re-inspired to not just throw my hands up and be like, I'm not, can't figure it out. I can't do it. Um, but taking a break and then being re-inspired and be like, you know what? I'm doing it. I'm going to figure this out. So I have about three 
and a half more skeins of this and I'll work through those um, so that this is finished and, and be done with it. I don't know if I'll add a border onto it or not. I would want to do this navy color, but I don't know if I'd be able to find it. I don't know. I have to think about it when I get there. When I get there, I'll figure it out. <laughs> so that was my first color pulling redemption yarn. I was super excited that I got it to work. I was able to use it for what I envisioned it being used for. Um, I mean, I could have taken it and just made like some kind of like striping something, you know, like a lot of people would use it for, but that's not the vision I had. <laughs> and so I just couldn't let it go. I'm a little, a little crazy like that, but you know, it's a season for crazy right now. So it's fine. <laughs> My second color pulling success is that blanket there. That yarn was sent to me by one of my subscribers. Her name was Alicia. Um, she was trying to color pull and that yarn is specifically designed to color pull. It's the Bernat blanket color pulling yarn. And uh, she was getting frustrated with it. She's like, I can't figure it out. Can I send it to you to see if you can figure it out? Because I want it to be used. I want it to become what it should be. Um, so she sent me four of these big cakes. I was like, wow, thank you. Um, so I was super excited to make this blanket with it. And when I received the yarn, I very quickly snatched it up, got working on it and could not get it to pull. And when I tell you that I felt like a failure, I felt like a failure. I'm like here it is. This person is counting on me to figure out this yarn. Like they sent it to me in the hopes that I could do it and I can't. And so I was just like, <sighs> I don't like being a failure. So I put the yarn in timeout. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to move on to some things that I can be successful at right now. So I don't feel bad about myself and I'll come back to it. I'll come back to it. So after finding success with this yarn, I was like, okay you're next. I literally, when I walked past the box that had the yarn in it, looked at it and said, you're next. <laughs> and so then I had a couple days off from work in a row, two days in a row. Imagine that two days off in a row. And, uh, the first day I was like, all right, today's the day. So I pulled out the yarn and started analyzing it, started trying to figure out what I was doing wrong. Um, and I fixed it like pretty quickly. Like it only, I didn't have to frog it at all. Like it just did it. I'm like, ah, oh, yes, yes. And so then I just went to town on it cause it's soft yarn. I was using a, um, acrylic hook from Susan Bates. So it just glided right along. And I'm like, yes, that only took, I mean, I, over the course of two days working on it here and there, I, I got it finished. Um, it was four of the big cakes and uh, when I ran out of them, that's all I had. Um, and I thought about doing a border on that as well. I would want to do the dark color again, but I don't know that I'd be able to find the right color. So I probably won't put a border on it, but I was excited that I figured out what I did wrong. And what I was doing wrong on this one is it only has two colors in the colorway. So that was making it a little tricky because, you know, like with this one, you know, if I start it blue, I can go just not think about it, go all the way through until I get to blue again, you know, but that one, it was dark light, dark light, dark light. And so the colors went quickly. I'm sorry, you guys, I've got like a piece of fuzz or something on my nose. And so that's why I keep trying to get that off. Um, but anyway, so what I realized that I was doing is I wasn't going through the colors correctly. Um, so for example, you know, if it's a one, two pattern, like dark light, dark light, dark light, one, two, one, two, one, two, you know, I have to go one, two, and that's the sequence one, two, but I was going one, two, one, two, and I was ending on one instead of another two. Um, so I realized that I'm like, Oh, I need to pay attention to that. Make sure that I'm ending on the correct color because it's not as easy to see as other yarns that I've worked with. So once I realized that I was like, Oh, okay. I, that makes sense. I think I'm doing it right now. So I was able to turn around after making my chain, turn around at the right spot. Well then the, I wanted it to make this checker pattern. And so in order to do a checkered pattern, you have to have the same amount of stitches per 
color. So like for example, this one, um, each the amount of clusters I'm using is 24 clusters in each color and that's consistent and so it makes squares. If it's different, if they're different numbers, it makes an argyle pattern, which is also beautiful. But I wanted the checkered. I'm going for checkered here. So I was trying to get the same number of stitches in both of the colors, but I realized that the light brown for me, my magic number, not light brown, light purple, the light purple um, needed 11 stitches and the dark needed 12. So it's a close enough number. It's only off by one that it still makes squares. It still looks like the checkered pattern. But before when I was doing it initially, I was trying to force them to have the same exact number. And I was like, you know what? This just isn't working. I'm going to make 12 in the dark purple and it'll be what it'll be. And we'll see what it looks like. And it turned out the checkered pattern. I enjoy. I love it. I think it's beautiful. Um, so that was exciting for me, those two revelations of making sure I turn around at the right part of the colorway and then adjusting those stitches like that. I'm like, yes, I figured it out. I was able to do it. So I just, um, this week, past couple weeks have needed to just escape into my yarn and have really enjoyed solving these puzzles, you know, <laughs> you know, like figuring it out. And then I'm excited to have used up this yarn that was gifted to me. And so I'm excited that I was able to turn it into something awesome and what it was meant to be. So <laughs> I'm excited about that. Um, the last thing from the box that of yarn that I was sent, I have a blanket that I made with the pink ombre yarn, pink and purple. And I'll show that in a blanket tour um, when I get to my next one, that'll be in there. Um, but I used that yarn, but I had this yarn um, in there as well. And I don't usually use variegated yarns like this. Um, I only get variegated yarns really if I'm going to color pull it. And this yarn isn't going to work for color pulling. The color changes are too small and not consistent enough, but it's still beautiful. I mean, it's a beautiful yarn. So what I'm doing with this is I'm making strips using a mile a minute. This is um, following the tutorial from uh, The Secret Yarnery, Krista. And I love how this is turning out. It is so visually interesting to use because as I'm going along, the different combinations, the different color changes, it happens quickly enough that it's like new all the whole time you're working on it. And I'm like, oh, this, that's pretty. That's pretty. Um, but I'm going to make as many strips as I can get out of this one skein. And then I'm going to use some of these other colors. I have them in solid colors, like, you know, this blue, this teal, um, this purple in here, I have these in solid colors. So then I'll make some solid color strips. Um, I have enough green left over from my um, bag I made that uh, I'll be able to make some strips to go along with it. And then I think I'm gonna join it in gray, like a, excuse me, one second. I'm going to um, join it together in like a gray, I think, because they're they're bright colors, beautiful colors. Um, so they need a good neutral to bring them all together. <laughs> so I'm excited to see how that comes out. And I will definitely show this on a blanket tour. So thanks for hanging out, guys. No matter what time it is, it's time for yarn. <laughs>